Bad news is I had COVID. I broke the top link somehow. I'm also gonna look at a truck real quick. I'll uh, let you guys be the judge on which one we're looking at. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hart Tongue Family Farms and today. You can kinda see it's a little different outside. And it's been a couple weeks since I've updated you guys. Um, good news and bad news, really. Good news is it's almost New Year. It's past Christmas. It's like January, or December 29th. We got three inches of snow yesterday. We're gonna get another two inches tonight. It's winter time. Bad news is I had COVID. I caught COVID at some point right after deer season and I was down for the count for 10 days. I had to isolate down in my basement. I had symptoms, lost my sense of smell. Ooh, there's a Magnum. Plowing snow it looks like. Right there. Lost my sense of smell, had a pretty decent head cold, you know, but really, I mean, for the most part, I really kind of got off easy with the whole COVID symptoms and everything. It really wasn't bad. I, you know, after I lost my sense of smell, tested positive, I was really fine for the next seven days. The last seven days of isolation, I just literally didn't leave my basement. So that was fun. But uh, anyway, uh, like I said, I haven't been out and about. I haven't been up to the farm in multiple weeks. I had to miss most Christmases, but luckily my grandma's Christmas is a week, is the Sunday, the New Year's, the day after New Year's Day. So the January 2nd. So I'll get to see that Christmas at least, but I missed every other Christmas, which kind of sucks, but oh well, it is what it is. But now I'm gonna head up to the farm today. Uh, my dad's feeding cows right now. We got a new quick hitch for the tractor. And we're gonna try and fit that on, make sure it works with all of our implements, see what other uh, attachments we need for it, and then hopefully get my dad instructions to, we need to go to a fab shop to change up or kind of modify our bale spears. Because if you guys remember a card to this video, actually I didn't record it, Never mind. When I was up here a couple weeks ago, right before deer season, uh, me and my buddy Daniel tried to, tried a quick hitch. It didn't work because A, it was too wide, but B, the, the mounting point for the bale spear we have right now isn't straight up and down. It's kind of recessed a little bit, the bottom links are, so we gotta go to a fab shop and get them as extended. So, long story short, we'll get up there, see what we got going on, kinda catch up with my dad. I haven't seen him in a couple weeks. So, let's get up to the farm. Quite a bit of snow up here. Yeah, geez, they got probably three inches up here. A Little bit more, I got two down in my house, two and a half. Got my dad's four-wheeler Arctic Cat. It's like a 2006 when we bought it brand new. He's got a blade on it. I don't know if he plowed this or the renter did. I'm not sure. Either way, my dad's moving bales right now. I'm going to go ahead, kind of walk around. Cats are here. Excuse me. Get dressed up, put some coveralls on, and see if we can get some stuff done. And there he is. Not sure what he's doing. Oh, he's probably going to we're gonna dump that bale spear off and put the quick hitch on. Let's get it going. Is the GoPro gonna work? You might not know because it froze six times in the last 10 minutes. So it didn't change batteries. So we'll see if this works. Okay, well hopefully it works now. But basically what we did was we had that uh, bale spear on the back. We took it off because we're gonna try and put the quick hitch on to basically fit it up, make sure it works before we uh, buy it. So we can still return if it doesn't work. But like I was telling my dad. So the reason our bale spear currently will not work is because this top link is farther forward than this bottom link. So it's basically, it's too much at an angle, it won't fit. You guys might see it, but like I said, it just, it isn't gonna work at the current moment. So we either gotta take it to a fab shop, have them grind this off, move it forward, or just go buy a new one. So we're not, we'll decide what we're gonna do, but we're gonna try and get this quick hitch on right now. And once we get this quick hitch on, we're gonna go try and fit it up on any one of our tools that we got. Preferably the blade. Low in the three point, and we'll get it on. So the one I had before, it was too wide. It wouldn't fit the uh, the blade, so we're actually gonna measure it first before we, uh, before we uh, try and put it on. So I'm gonna measure basically tip to tip, and we'll walk over to the blade and the mower and see if it'll work. So that quick hitch, so they have inch and seven eighths thick hooks and then they're 36 and a half inches wide from tip from edge to edge so now we're going to go measure the blade and see if it'll fit what you got 36 and three quarters to this <laughs> it's going to be close but it'll fit let's do this one but it should work 
Oh, yeah, that's going to be close. It's also going to be very close, but it'll fit right there. So there's inch and seven eighths. It'll be very close. I think it'll fit. Worst case scenario, we just take a grinder and grind a half inch off. Grind a little bit off of that or off the tool itself. Put that on. Try it. So as you guys saw, this isn't working because there's two problems we have now with this one. So these are too far back and then this one's too high, so you can kind of see. We're about three inches too high on this. So it either takes some serious fabricating and still might not work because of the center beam, or at that rate, we might as well just get a new frame for it because this is actually past. This one really isn't ours. So we'll see what we want to do. But for now, we'll go over and try, the, try this on the other two implements. Okay, now we're gonna see if this quick hitch works over here. Hopefully it works. Let's see if we get a pin for this. Let's see if I get a pin for this. All right, let's give it a shot. Space is on. Hope it works. Okay, that's what it is. Go down a little bit on this. get something bigger that fits that hole. A little more finagling than I would have liked, but hey, it works. So I'd say back this out of the way and just see if we can hook onto that. Or do you need any snow move while you got it hooked up? Well, I was just going to leave it hooked up though. Well, we need to uh, get a bigger pin for that. See, we can almost even just get a bolt. Get a bolt that goes through it and then have a spacer on that. Either way, we're getting it to work. I think this will work, hopefully. So came to a couple conclusions here. It'll fit with this, no problem. That one takes a little tweaks. And I somehow bent the crap out of this. Don't know how. I didn't really pick up on much weight, but I must have been picking up that blade. But either way, we're gonna take this thing off and bring it into town. Well, that was fun. We got it but man these things are finicky any any tips on three-point implements do you guys let me know because i haven't really done much with them at all so i'm just kind of learning as we go but, so we got to get a regular bolt for this pin and then a spacer with it and we got to get the new link new top link for this guys i broke it all right we'll move this thing back in the shed
Okay, well, it did work. We'll see what happens here. We'll go up and take that quick hitch off, like he said. Somehow we gotta get that leveler fixed, so. Well, that was fun. In the process of trying to hook everything up, I broke the top link somehow. Like I said, I, I still don't know how I did that, but it's not good. It's wedged in there, so that's not good. Gotta go find a vise or something to get that out with. So I broke that, but um, I think we got everything to work. The blade's gonna be a little bit finicky to get it hooked up. Might have to take a grinder just to give us a little bit more clearance. But other than that, I think it should work. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, that's it, we got the hitch off, quick hitch off. I got that top link off. I'm gonna take that down to the farm and see if I can get that, get that off. So if we can get that off, we'll get a new piece in there as long as the threads aren't messed up and then hopefully we'll be good. Like I said, I don't know how I did that. I, I really don't know. But either way, I wanna figure out how I did that so I don't do it again. I'm guessing just when I was trying to force hook that blade up, but again, I don't, I don't know. But either way, what's done is done. That's a hundred dollar mistake or so, but it is what it is. So now we'll park this thing in here, call it a day. Whew, short day, but kind of a frustrating day if I'm being honest, guys. That kind of sucked. But we got it done, like I said, I do appreciate any comments or uh, any uh, advice on three-point hitches. I'm new to it, so any advice on how to make it easier, because that hooking that blade up, it's just, it, it's so tight. I think I'm gonna grind it to give it a little bit more room on the blade itself, just so I can kind of, it, it, it's it's getting pinched against the quick hitch. So like I said, any, any uh, advice down below would be greatly appreciated. I know my folks over in Europe and whatnot, they use three-point implements all the time. So I was talking about the quick hitch that we have. It is just narrow enough. You can kind of see what we were rubbing. I'm thinking about taking a grinder and just grinding off I don't know, a quarter of this or so. You can kind of see that's what we're rubbing. Just make it a little bit easier to get into it. I don't think that'll hurt anything structurally. And we also need to get a get something for this bottom link. Three and a half inch long bolt. We need a bolt to put on the bottom here. And we'll get a spacer that goes on there as well. So it's something that's nice and sturdy so like i said that one works flawlessly and this one uh, we got to do a little bit of finagling but we'll make it work got some stuff done my dad uh fed the cows checked them gave them some hay well before i got here so and then moved some hay down below so the cows should be good we're supposed to get a really cold snap saturday so in two days it's supposed to be like a high of 10 or six and low of like minus 20. So you definitely wanna make sure the cows have plenty of food then because they're literally not gonna do much. They're gonna to huddle together to stay warm and they're gonna eat. So they eat, stay warm and burn calories. Winter project at some point to bring that down to the farm and do some welding on it. So hopefully we can get that done at some point. So yeah, we're gonna go, I'm gonna to run to Raiders real quick, which is a local dealer. Uh, see if I can get a bolt and a spacer for the top link of that blade. And then I'm going to run down to the farm, see if I can get that kind of top eyeball whatever you want to call it off the the top link of our tractor that i bent see if i can get that off and maybe even get the get a new part on there and then i'll also get some grind to do on some spaces i'm gonna head home so not a whole lot going on guys but it's winter time really we're in the on the farm i do know that they've been selling cattle they've been selling a lot of cattle in december prices are all right They're like a buck 30 i think we sold them per pound which is good but it's definitely not offsetting the five plus dollar corn that we could have been selling the corn that we're feeding our cows but it is what it is i mean at least it's not one dollar corn we'd be one dollar a pound that eh, we'd be losing a lot of money if that was the case but they've been feeding cattle selling cattle getting new calves in and then uh winter maintenance we're bringing stuff into the shop and kind of going over it and of course the boys have been having fun with this new snow they got sleds snowmobiles they've been going around having fun with that so anyway i'll see you guys uh probably at preston here's our local dealer and man look at this fent i'm guessing a 1050 no, 939. They got a 9 Series here. I know they sold their first Fent tractor last year, or maybe the spring or something like that. So that they sold the 1050 out of here, but because they just recently just became a Fent tractor dealer, or Agco starting to let them sell Fent tractors. By the way, that's a pretty nice tractor at 939. That'd be cool to try someday. I'd love to try a Fent tractor with a variable transmission. We've never had a CVT or IVT. We've never had a continuously variable transmission on our farm, so I'd love to try one someday. But we're gonna stop in here real quick just to see what all they got, and then uh, grab that bolt and nut that what I need, and we'll head to the farm. So I got quite a bit of stuff in the lot there, at our local Agco dealer, really the only Agco dealer in the area. And they got quite a bit of Massey's, Massey mowers. 
heard those things are actually pretty decent. Those massive wind rowers, fent tractors, a couple grain carts, a couple other tractors. We got a nice 45 55 sitting there. And they're one of the biggest Featherlight dealers, I think, in the nation, actually. Featherlight's what we have was our gooseneck livestock trailer. So they, they move a lot of aluminum trailers out of here. So All right, let's now let's head down to the farm. We're also gonna look at a truck real quick. I'll uh, let you guys be the judge on which one we're looking at. Comment down below what truck we're looking at. And also, uh, we're probably gonna be selling our bale truck. I believe we're gonna ask 10,000 for it. It's got a nice working bale truck on all the hydraulics and everything. We just wanna update it because A, we don't need the bale truck anymore. Might as well sell it so someone can get use, good use out of it since we got our tractor. And B, we wanna get a, just basically update trucks. So I'll uh, put a link to the posting online. I'll put a link in, to that in the description. So you guys should check that out. Just going by our local dealer. See if they got anything new or fancy on the lot. Looks like a brand new New Holland round baler. Updated model. Yeah. A couple of manure spreaders and whatnot. Nice chopper, but most part not a whole lot. That 12 row folding Drago looks really nice, but it also looks really out of our price range. I bet that thing's 100 grand plus. There's our bull racks. We're not hauling cattle this week. Otherwise the semi would be hooked up to it. But we're moving calves around because I see our, uh, our gooseneck trailer's hooked up. Looks like Pat or someone working on the liquid manure spreader. Let's go take a look. I well, we got the 99 in here, the Century class, out of from, it was sitting over next door for the last year and a half. I think they're going through it and getting it all fixed up and well, we can use it again next year, hopefully. Nathan's got his nice snowmobile sitting over there. Yeah, I'm gonna start working on those projects. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. 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 Nope, okay, fine. So I didn't bring the camera with me, sorry about that, but Pat and I basically just went ahead and we had a water, basically a, a watering station for the cattle. It froze up, so we went and unthawed it and put some heat lamps and stuff on it. Then I went down to the Pat's place, got the loader tractor, brought it up to Nathan. So that way uh, Nathan and Curtis are cleaning out one side of Butch's. They're completely cleaning it out. It's going to take like 20 loads of the big manure spreader, which is a lot. And that's going to save us a lot of money uh, come next year's fertilizer prices. But anyway, so they're doing that and they pat one of the loader tractor up there so they could actually bet it too once they're done. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and trim these bushings down and then head home probably. Well, that worked. Let's try the second one. Got it. So now I'll take it and trim it basically shine it up, make it not sharp, take the burrs off with this little sanding tool, and then, well not sanding tool, but with these two wheels right here, go ahead home. Man, this stuff smells, it got hot. Trying to trim those edges. Can I see the discoloration? That's what happens when it gets hot. So we'll uh, take it over this wheel and trim it up. Kind of tell that that's bent. Might be able to continue to use it, but I don't know. Might just have to get a new one. I'll call and price out a new one, but we'll see. Either way, I'm kind of bummed because I guarantee you that's not cheap. So we might just continue using it. Hi, kitty, kitty. You need to go. Come on. Come on, kitty, kitty. Come on. Go. Go on, get. Go on, get. Well, that's going to do it, guys. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a short one, but we got a lot of winter projects going on. This truck, like I said, is fixed. Pat's planning on uh, using it next week to take a load of cattle out just to put it through its paces. I mean, when you're hauling 80,000 pounds, 85,000, I think that trailer can also hold off the interstate. When you're hauling 85,000 pounds, two and a half hours away, well, that's a good workout on a truck. So hopefully this good old cat motor will be up to the task. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. A lot of winter projects coming. Be sure to follow us on our social media channels at Facebook and Instagram. And of course, guys, as always, top top for now. Stay safe. Take it easy. I'll be using that next year. Prepaid some glyphosate before this year. Or Roundup, as you guys have uh, heard it before.